hi guys i'm back again today with another video and today we're checking out how rotterdam's flood defenses could save could help save us all Ooh, us so meaning like the rest of the world um let's see or maybe because we can use their techniques on the other side of the world maybe that's how it's not necessarily like them helping us oh it is but not direct help i i don't know what i'm saying but anyways let's go straight into the video let's get it water represents one of the biggest threats posed by climate change that's because rising seas stronger storms and heavier rainfall could massively increase flooding by the end of the century it's already starting to happen, and it's very likely to get worse. Catastrophic flooding in Western Europe after violent storms and powerful floodwaters destroying entire towns. It's easy to feel overwhelmed looking at footage like this. It seems like no one has any idea what to do about this problem. So we're just going to see more and more damaging floods year after year. But there is one place where it's possible to imagine a very different future. When you look at the city of Rotterdam, the water is in our genes. You could say we, we, we are already working for a thousand years on this topic. Keeping the water out isn't a new challenge for the Netherlands. It's a battle they've been fighting for centuries. So when the effects of climate change started to crop up, they were like, yeah, let's do this. We're ready. We traveled to Rotterdam to find out how this city is getting ready for the future and whether the ingenious stuff they've come up with will ultimately be enough to save them. And hopefully the rest of us too. Mm. When you look at Holland uh, uh, or the Netherlands, the, the name the Netherlands already says that we are a low-lying country. One Not third there. of the, this country is below sea level and two thirds is vulnerable to flooding. Back in the day, the only things keeping the water at bay were the dikes, which are basically just raised mounds of earth. Once every few decades, the water would overwhelm the dikes and cause catastrophic flooding. And that was just the way things were. Until one day in 1953, all that suddenly changed. In 53, uh, it was a disaster. I was five years old and I lived on a farm. There was no radio, so people didn't know where we were. A powerful storm struck the southern coast, overwhelming dikes that had been badly damaged in the Second World War. On the morning of February 1st, 1953, Kosa's father and brother woke him up and told him what had happened. They say, now oh, everything is water and your mother and sister are down by the sea. So he's the only one who survived? In almost 2,000 people died. And that was the moment for us we said, this can never happen again. That's the time we started making our first barrier. And his family, I mean. The flood galvanized the Dutch government to build the world's most powerful flood defense system, the Delta Works. It was a series of modernized dams and storm surge barriers that took more than 40 years to complete. And the final act of the Delta Works is the barrier over here, the Maasland barrier, made to protect Rotterdam. So Looking at the ball. biggest movable storm surge barrier in the world. Oh, it's yeah, the same that. size as the Eiffel Tower. So you look at an Eiffel Tower laying on its side. Mm. Most of the time, the barrier stays open so ships can pass through. When a storm comes along, it snaps shut, preventing the storm surge from traveling upriver and flooding Rotterdam. The movable design was radical when it was completed in 1997, 
and it's inspired similar structures in flood-prone cities around the world. If you look at St. Petersburg in Russia, a small version of this barrier has been made over there. And maybe in the future, in front of Manhattan, they're thinking about a way to protect that also. So this was the first one, and now smaller versions are coming all over the world. But the barrier on its own isn't enough to keep Rotterdam from flooding. Talking about climate change, we see an increase of more intensive rainfall. We already are facing now and then small scale flooding, so we need more places where we can store this water. Arnaud Molinar is also working to keep Rotterdam dry, not by keeping the water out, but by giving it a place to go. This is the water square. And it is actually, you could say, a symbol for our approach, how to become climate adapted. So under normal circumstances, this square can be used as, for example, a basketball field. But on days like this, it stores excess rainwater and keeps it from flooding the streets. Uh, so it's a multifunctional solution. We want to add quality to the urban space, but in this way, we are also adding uh, water storage. This is the first water square that we uh, have been developing, but it's part of a bigger package of measures. An interesting one close by here is what we call... My question, I don't know if he's going to answer this, but where does the water go? Does it just stay there and then dries up? Do you wait for it to dry up? or? Does it go somewhere? Because I don't know how the mosquito situation is in Europe. It doesn't that bring mosquitoes like that rainwater in one space or water in general, just dirty in one space brings mosquitoes. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments called the duck park or the, the rooftop park which is a kind of a long levee of one kilometer and on top of it a huge green park it's storing excessive rainwater because of the green roof looking at the challenges related to climate change a lot of people think it's going to cost us a lot of space and money and we try to show that you also can use it to work on a better city In some ways, the Dutch are just as baffled as the rest of us about climate change. For one thing, there's the question of what happens when sea levels rise beyond a certain point. The Maslent barrier was built to withstand one meter of sea level rise, and a redesigned barrier could potentially handle even more than that. But there's only so much that even Dutch engineering can do. Beyond two meters, it's difficult. We are working on new scenarios. Suppose it will be more than two meters, four meters, five meters. Then what? People ask me, will you be moving uh, on a certain <laughs> moment uh, in time to, to the higher grounds in the Netherlands? I, I, I can't imagine that that will be a decision. For survivors like coasts, on the other hand, it's not so hard to imagine the worst. Nobody will to realize in that there will be an end of uh, nice life here. I think we all will be refugees. I think in 300 years, uh, Rotterdam will still be here. Uh, but when the sea level will rise four or five meters, we will have to find additional solutions. Any idea what those would be? Maybe on a larger scale, invest in floating, in floating districts, floating cities. And that brings us to our final and most radical solution. My name is Koen Olthuis. I'm a water architect. For the last 15 years, we've been building floating homes in cities that face climate change and sea oh. So we have the floating home, which has a floating foundation and it can move up and down with the fluctuation of the river. 
But to keep it on one spot, we have these kind of stilts. The water will come up and you will see that the house will move up, 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 up. And if the water goes down, it just guides it back. 100 years ago, you see cities start to grow up with high-rise buildings because they saw the space in the air. Well, we see the city has to grow on the water. It's not only about houses, it's about floating apartment buildings, floating roads, floating parks, all the kind of urban components you need to make your city more waterproof. Who knows? Maybe someday we'll all live in floating houses. Or maybe something entirely new will come along. Maybe we'll just Preparing dangle in the air. Preparing for climate change is a tough challenge. But for the innovators of Rotterdam, it's a process of adaptation that never ends. It's not finished, our project. It keeps on going. It's an ongoing process. I feel safe, my children will feel safe, and my grandchildren will also feel safe. But after that, you have to think again. Wow. Like, they're very innovative over there. I feel like it's a continuous growth and they even said it growth of finding uh sustainable and other ways to like work with the environment that they've got they're working with the environment that they've got right so, and that is really good because obviously that's your country like you have to find a way to survive there um, and they're doing it in a very, like, modern, advanced, and at least something that works, right? I don't know if anyone else is doing that, but there's probably a few countries that are doing that as well. Um, and it's, like, every time that I watch this, I'm always, like, shook, like, freaking floating houses. What? And it's not just floating houses, like meaning a house on water. No, it's actually a house that adapts to high rise levels of water or floods, right? It's uh, like, what? I didn't even know that thing exists until today. That is so smart. So smart. Wow. I don't, I feel like every time that we react to these videos, I feel like I have I know everything already. Like, I feel like, why are we reacting to, like, Netherlands and Flood? Like, we know. How, why do we keep reacting to the dams and the, you know, the bridges? We know that already, but then no, because every video, even if it's kind of like on the same path, it gives us new information or different perspective so it's never the same and i love reading your comments even if i don't reply i still give it a heart uh like uh, i read that someone's parents grew up in you know the first video where we watched um those areas that like were flooded in the 1959 I believe. Um, and like some of you guys' hometown is there. And it's crazy to see how like different it is or how the Netherlands has grown after that incident, right? Um, so yeah, I do enjoy reading your comments. So if you have more information or anything to say, you can let me know down in the comments. Even if I don't reply, best believe I did read them. I'll try my best to reply or at least give it a heart so that you guys will know that I do read them. But thank you guys for joining and I will see you hopefully tomorrow. Bye.